My family's all a bit stove mad, so almost every little building that we've got will have a stove in it. Today's video is all about installations into buildings like this. Caravans, boats, little outbuildings, shepherd's huts, and the upsides and downsides of installing stoves into them, and what you can get away with and what you perhaps can't. Okay, uh, I want to start by saying I want a straight flue, straight off the top of the appliance. I don't care what roof you've got, do not go out the side. Um, well, we've used an insulated flue system, uh, and again, that's an absolute must. I know it's more expensive, but these systems generally have about a two inch gap to combustible, so we can have it pretty close to the ceiling and to uh, this wooden wall behind. Um, and obviously the issue with smoke going the wrong direction is, is all about it not being hot enough in the flue, so it's pushing the smoke the wrong direction. If we've got an insulated flue, it will stay hotter for longer, and therefore we get less drawer issues. This stove is coming out of the back, and that's a problem, uh, so it's hard to light, but it's because of this oven, it's the only option. The way they've mitigated that is they've actually put a four inch flue on it, which you're not legally allowed to do in a house, um, but we're just breaking that rule because we're not subject to that rule. Uh, and smaller flue on a short chimney on a small stove will just create a bit more zip to overcome that. Uh, next thing we need... Hang on, sorry, go, just going back. What did you say? A smaller flue on a... On this short flue, because it's a short length yeah. uh, and it's a small stove, things will work better with a, a small diameter flue. If you've got a big stove, things will often work better with a large flue. So it's, don't, don't generalise that, it's yeah. specific to this situation. Okay. Fire safety, we've got wooden floor, we've got a wooden wall. This has got a little shroud that's actually made by the manufacturer of this stove. Um, again, that doesn't comply with any, you couldn't do that in a house. Um, and certainly if somebody asked me, is this safe? Absolutely not, it's dangerous. But it's not so dangerous that I wouldn't do it. What if you're buying a stove that doesn't have the shroud? What? I'd get something. You'd get a hearth. Yeah, you can put a, a stone hearth down, um, and again, you could put the same stone behind the okay. stove. Um, or you could buy this shroud and stick another stove into it. Mm -hmm. um, but you need to have some thought to uh, not setting fire to things. The next thing is your flue height. Longer chimneys typically will draw better, yeah. but freezing cold chimneys won't. So there's no use in having a short building and a big flagpole sticking out the top of it. You've got to get that balance right and nobody can tell you what is right. It's experimenting. Okay. Generally, what would you say are the sort of guidelines of between? You've got to make sure that you go up um, above the building you don't want to be near the roof because obviously there's hot embers coming out of there so you want to be at least two foot above the roof okay and you want to be in open space okay. um so if you've got a load of trees around the building chop them down you yeah, yeah. You, you can't have it it's just not going to work it's going to disrupt the air you might set fire to them get rid of them or move the building okay. or, or caravan or whatever it is the 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 height of the flu is is where all the risk comes in so yes we don't want things to set fire and generally people are very good at meet, mitigating those threats the thing that they don't realize is that you you 
draw is balanced on a feather. It takes very little to knock it one way or the other. Mm -hmm. So fog descending down is high pressure weather coming down on that flue. Now, if you've got the stove nice and hot and it's drawing well, you've probably got enough to overcome that. But let's say you're sleeping in this building and it's 3 a.m. when the fog starts descending and this whole stove starts to cool down, it reaches that tipping point where rather than the draw pumping smoke upwards, it pumps it downwards. Um, and obviously if you're asleep, this will kill you. So if you're wanting to put a stove in somewhere where you're going to sleep, what's important? What can help that situation? Carbon monoxide alarm, yeah. smoke alarm, they're an absolute must and you've got to check them. Um, and, and basically that will, that will cover a lot of sins. Um, the other thing is don't trust the stove. Get to know it. Get to know it in different weathers and uh, ideally when you're not sleeping in it. So try and run it overnight and come back ideally on a foggy morning and see has it filled the room with smoke. Does something like having a window open yes. decrease your chances of the, it going wrong for you? Yes it does. Um, so have it, you know, having some sort of ventilation coming into yeah. that building is a great idea. Um, again, it needs experimentation because uh, it, you could potentially make it worse by having the vent on the wrong side of the building. Um, so if you, if, if you had a vent somewhere and the wind's rushing past and actually sucking air out of the building, right. you've got a real problem. So you've got a, the prevailing wind that's where you want your vent because it's pressurizing the room and forcing smoke out of it. Okay. This comes down to experience. People get good at knowing where to park or where to moor their boat up. Um, places that are, you know, down in the bottom of a dip are a problem. Places where it's surrounded with trees, again, we've got a problem. We need big, open spaces and we need to maximize that flue height and then we i mean people who are doing this every day get good at it but you go through the step the same steps you light the stove how easy was it to light you're judging everything was it drawing well was it um was the stove controlling well if if anything's not feeling normal those are red flags yeah. and I know it's probably going to mean you have an uncomfortable night but am I going to sleep with that thing? No, no way. I, I, you know, If I've stayed there for a week and I've got to learn it then maybe I'm going to start experimenting with more risk. Boats will typically have a section of flue that comes off particularly because they're going under little bridges and things so that the, the flue is removable and then when they stop or same with a caravan I would do exactly the same thing I'd have a bit of flue that stayed in the caravan and where I pulled up I would add the flue to it uh, because I, I know it's convenient to just have a short flue and you can drive anywhere but you, you're taking too many risks you need to get out of the way uh, get that flue up and the smoke out of the way um, So can we sort of summarise some of those bits that are red flags for you? So the, the main red flags are, what's it like to light? So was it just, when I try to light it in my normal way, the thing that I'm used to, is it behaving normally or is it spilling smoke into the room and I can't get it going? The next red flag is, I might have not noticed that it was harder to light. It may have just lit fine, but, um, when I reload the stove, is more smoke, is it more readily coming into the room? Um, is the control not very good? Is the glass going black? All of these are, are flags showing that drawer isn't behaving 
quite as it ordinarily would. Okay, so if you've got some of those red flags... I may well want to move my position, um, yeah. drive down the road or moor up somewhere else, um, and if where I am just generally just isn't working very well, we need heat. So I'm going to light the stove and I'm going to make it work and I'm going to get it as warm in there as I can. But then, rather than closing it down and running it overnight, I'm going to open that vent and let it run hot. Um, because the hotter it is, the safer it is. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so it will it will burn out, it will burn very hot, fill the space with warmth, and then it's going to burn out completely and that's good because then when it cools down and this thing is not going to behave safely, it's gone out. Uh, I suppose practical installation, um, uh, people think about trying to maximise single skin pipe because they're going to get more heat. Forget it, it's a bad idea. There's no point in having a tenth of a kilowatt extra heat, but doubling your chances of harming somebody. Stick to insulated pipe. If where the stove has to go because space is a valuable commodity uh, and it's a, there's something like a joist above it and you, you've got to bend around it, you can do a little wiggle. Um, you are significantly increasing the issues that you will have so don't do it lightly um, only do it if you have to and basically you're going to have to accept that the thing will work literally half as well uh, i know that sounds dramatic it's only a little wiggle in the flu but we're dealing with something that's not drawing well anyway so any bends yeah. any yeah bends. this stove has a rear outlet anything like it's that yummy. pros of having a wood burner in well, a small building? I, I mean, you take something like this, it's fantastic. Space is a very valuable commodity in these sorts of buildings. And we've got, you know, a hot plate, we've got a little oven, we've got, um, you can actually put like a little uh, grill in here and cook in here. You could do toast, you've got a warming shelf for drying things. Um, it's, it's your heat source, it's cooking. It, it's everything to you. It's also nice to look at it's, and be with. Is being outside building regs, what's the positives, what's the negatives? The negatives are you don't have a list of rules that make you feel safe. The positives are you can do what you want and you can learn and experiment. You know, if you want to go out and live in a caravan or in a boat, part of it is the freedom. And there's no rules. You've got complete freedom. Um, uh, you, you can, you know, you're, you're not allowed to use a four inch flue. It's safer to use a four inch flue in this situation and that's what's been used. Um, you can only do that in a building that's not subject to building regs. Essentially, the number one rule at the end of your installation is, does it work? If I was doing an installation like this, it's one of the few occasions where my advice is do it yourself. I am not pro you having an installer in. He's made all the risks. He's decided all the things about the risk of where it's going to go a little bit wrong, where it's not going to work so well. That's rubbish. You have got to have your finger on the pulse. You've you got to know it. everything. So your recommendation is do it yourself. Yeah. You, yeah. you have got to understand everything about what risks have been taken so that you're alert to them. Mm -hmm. um, and, and of course the cost saving opportunities are you're doing the work yourself. You're not complying with building regs. You're using smaller flues. You're using less flue than you would be allowed to in a house. You're not having a hearth and a thing behind you. You're just putting a shroud there. Um, you're taking, you're saving loads of costs because you're not complying with any of the rules. But you have to take responsibility for this. You have to do it. Mm -hmm. You have to do every single part of it because only then will you understand where you've cut corners, where you have not Have you got any other points? 
literally just because it worked yesterday does not mean it will work today. Um, the, the temperature outside, so being in the winter, means that the flu, what will happen, that top bit of flu that's outside will fill with freezing cold air. When you light the stove, that freezing cold air acts like a plug, mm -hmm. so it literally won't draw at all. That doesn't necessarily mean that you've got your installation wrong, it just means that you've got a plug of freezing cold air. You have to force that out. Mm -hmm. Generally, I would do that by either filling the stove with newspaper or a fire lighter, let it just blaze, absolutely rage and force that plug of cold air out. Once you've done that, you can then experiment and see is this working today or, or how is the weather affecting it? So would you say in general it's more dangerous in winter? It, it's... Or more like... It's not... So, draw is simply a, a, a balance of pressure. Um, so the bigger the temperature difference between inside the flue and outside, the better the draw. So actually, once you force that, that cold plug of air out, you can find that it works better because there's a bigger temperature difference. Um, but you, you have to force that plug out initially. So you don't just sort of be put off in, in winter because you know, it might just be smoking out into the room. That's just a plug of freezing cold air. Force that out and then you can start experimenting with it. But it's like everything, there's no substitute for experience. Um, you, will, you will learn how it behaves in different weathers, different temperatures, and you will essentially, through trial and error, get to the point where you know what to do in each individual situation. Um, but. Uh, particularly whilst it's new and you're learning. I know lots of these buildings like this one is used as like a, uh, an office or, or a place where people chat during the day. Um, so of course they're awake, they're alert, um, they've got smoke alarm, they've got a CO alarm, there's no issue. Um, it's, it's if people are sleeping in the thing where real risk is coming in. Do you still need to be aware of it when you're alert and awake because obviously Sometimes when smoke comes into the room, you can't see it. You don't, you don't notice. notice. Yeah, that's why you have a smoke alarm and a CO alarm because you aren't going to notice. Um, I mean, if, if it's something puffed out loads, you would. But generally, if it's just meandering out, the alarms are your friend. I hope that was helpful. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> there was a lot in that, and um, uh, I think this is a really useful video if you are planning to put a stove in an outbuilding. Uh, I know there's a lot there, but you need to think about those things. And uh, if you have, basically, you can just learn to enjoy it.